Happy Valentine's Day. Um, I am busy working in my studio today and I want to share with you what I have going on and also maybe talk a little bit about the We Green BC's quilt that's behind me and things that I have um, new in the shop. So that, oh, I also have an announcement about um, a scheduling conflict. So let's just dig in. I'm going to share what I've been working on. And um, also, so let me just do that. So um, last year I worked on a painting, a little watercolor painting um, of the little old lady in the shoe who lived in the shoe and she had so many children, she didn't know what to do. Um, that is going to be, I'm going to be working on that. So that will be an edge to edge foundation panel collage. I'm expecting that back from my printer. I got that finished design uh, working on that this week. Um, I'll share with you <coughs> what the gray tone looks like. Let's see if I can share my screen and pull that up. I'll do that in just a second because um, I think that will be okay. Let's see. Let me open these two things to share with you so you can see um, what is going on with that. Let's see, the little old lady who lived in the shoe. Okay, well, I'll just share this with you. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, obviously the painting isn't finished, but all I wanted to do was kind of draw it out, lay down the color, and um, see if that, design is something that I want to do. So I, you may remember that years ago, back when I was a young, young person, before I had children, I was a mural artist. And a lot of the projects that I did were murals in children's bedrooms. And so um, <coughs> the little old lady who lived in a shoe was one vignette that I painted in multiple nurseries. And I just have always loved that. Um, obviously, there aren't any children because I'm going to use some of my Michael Miller fabric that has little children at play. I think that will be really fun to use. So I, I, I have been working on that this um, this week. I've got that uh, already in a gray tone and sent over to my the printer that will be printing a sample for me, and I will be working on that. So hopefully I'll pick that up next week or this week. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And um, I'll share with you my progress on that. Um, remember, as you join, to go ahead and um, so just say hello. I love to I love to see everybody hop on and say hello. And uh, <coughs> the other thing that I was working on this week, um, so somebody had mentioned that they, well, I know that, everybody really enjoyed and I did too the Christmas 12 days of Christmas pattern quilt along it was really fun to have a quilt along and um so I'm preparing to do one again in May that's on my calendar so I've been uh you know planning out my calendar for the year and May is I think when we'll be doing a quilt along and of course um April showers bring May flowers. And so I have a vision of a quilt that I'd like to create. And so I'm just barely kind of digging in and working on that. And um, so this is what I came up with. Um, this is this would be one of the of the little projects. This is a poppy. Um, nothing has been ironed down yet. I still have it um, loose on the parchment paper so that I can change it if I want. Um, but I'm thinking in terms of blocks for this quilt, just like we did with the 12 days of Christmas. Um, but of course, I would love to have your feedback. So if there's something that you'd like to do besides um, flowers, because flowers are actually quite complex and I find myself getting frustrated with flowers, even though I love love flowers. I do get 
frustrated with them. Um, kind of, and my frustration comes from simplifying the design enough so that it's not too complex. I want it to be simple and fun and really enjoyable to do. So um, I would love your feedback about that. If you like the idea of doing kind of a garden party um, or May flowers, uh, I think that would be fun. Caroline, do you need, are you leaving for school? Yeah. I love you. Come say hello to everybody, please. Okay, my, my daughter, um, my daughter Caroline, you don't get to see her very often. She's a she's a little doll. She's going back down to school. She came up for Valentine's and for dinner last night. <laughs> Sit in the lap. <laughs> Come here. This is my this is my look at her. Look at that face. Is she just the most beautiful thing? So um <laughs> she's heading back to school. Give me a kiss. I love you, I love you too. Have a good day. So okay, be safe. Text me when you get there. Okay. So yeah. she's going back down to college. <laughs> okay. Adios. Drive safe. I love you. Good luck you. this week. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that, everybody. That's what we get when we're doing a live video. But you also get a uh, more of a glimpse into my life and my children. <laughs> so um, anyway, okay. Your feedback. I want your feedback about what sort of quilt you might want to make in um, May and I want to do a quilt along in May and of course let's make a quilt that you guys want to do so um, okay so that's been going on um, I also ha finally have a, I have a big announcement on a color bundle you know we're working on updating and and getting all of our cut our fabric bundles ready for the shop um, and trying to keep them in stock. I, you know, I did not set out to be a fabric retailer. And so that has always just been, um, a, you know, my second priority and my first priority is to create good designs. Um, but I realized that having fabric that I curate is something that's kind of helpful. So we now have yellow in stock. I just barely put this in stock today. So as you probably remember um, my fabric bundles contain 18 pieces of fabric that are uh, eighth of a yard cuts that's four and a half inches by the width of fabric and the thing that's great about these is um, the way I like to use them so I I select each fabric they run the gamut from light to dark and warm to cool and yes, there are warm and cool yellows. In fact, I'll do a little demonstration today. And if you're interested in learning more about my um, what I'm talking about with uh, cool and warm, um, join me in one of my retreats or webinars um, because I talk a lot about color theory, but I don't have time to go into that right now. But uh, the nice thing about having an eighth of a yard fabric cut is, well, number one, there aren't very many online retailers that will do eighth of yard cuts. So I think this is a really, this is the cut, the size that I prefer. And the reason is, is because I can take this long strip of fabric, I can cut some off the end and prepare just a small piece of fabric with light steam seam two on the back. So I prepare it with my fusible and then it's ready to go. And it just helps me stay really um, tidy. So then I can fold this back up really easily and um, put it away. So it's a lot easier for me to work with than a fat quarter. Um, so anyway, the yellow is now in stock and we have blue and purple and pink and green and we will have red and orange again soon. Um, and then I'm also working on a, a neutral bundle. So, um, and a fussy cutting bundle. So that's the goal, uh, slowly chipping away at that. Okay, so one other announcement. Um, <clears throat> I'm doing, uh, whoops, let me turn off my phone. Um, I do monthly paid webinars. They're just 35 bucks to sit and learn about a specific project from start to finish. Uh, this month I scheduled the parrot. The parrot is from my book and the webinar, the cost of the webinar does not include the pattern. So these are the two parrots that are from my book. Um, 
you can see I've got these ready to hang up. They've just, they've got facing on the back and, um, but I think I'm going to cut the, I'm going to cut the facing off and put them in a quilt. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so this month is the parrot, but I made a mistake. Well, I didn't make a mistake. My son is a swimmer. You might know that. I, I tell you all, everything. <laughs> so I have a 16 year old son. He just turned 16 and he is a swimmer in high school and in club swimming and his club swimming championship is that weekend down in Southern Utah. So we are going to be gone for that. So I have a conflict with um, teaching the parrot webinar. So I've rescheduled it for the first Saturday in March at 9 a.m. If you have registered for that and you can't make it, I am happy to refund your money, but I will also provide a recorded version of the event. So there are a few more um, seats left for that if you're interested. Okay. Oh, one other thing that we also now have in stock are ink tents, including the 24 um, piece version. And this is the one that I have. So ink tents are the, they work like colored pencils. They look like colored pencils, but we can draw on fabric with them to create some really lovely details. And I'm going to show you on, um, on my frog, how I've used uh, the ink tents. And then you know that we used the ink tents pencils on the Valentine, the banner for the Valentine. So these have just been really fun for me to doodle, you know, just to play around with. And um, so these are now available on the website as well. So my website is collagequilter.com. Okay. Oh, one other design I've been working on. Um, you guys are going to think I'm absolutely bonkers that I've been hop jumping around from thing to thing, but um, I don't, I, I don't feel like I'm out of control, <laughs> like disorganized. I just, I, I, I like to play. And if I keep my design work fun and I, um, give some variety to it, then I don't find myself getting bored or frustrated or anything. So another design that I am thinking of and trying to figure out how I want to do it is this is a ladybug. You'll remember that I did a ladybug collage. This is kind of based on that little ladybug collage, but I want to make it a block quilt. Um, I really am dying to make a quilt for my mother-in-law. And um, so I, uh, I'm, I'm working on this and this will be, so this isn't the final version. It will be a pixelated um, ladybug. And then I might add some collage on the you know, to add detail. So anyway, that's another thing I've been working on. <laughs> Call me crazy. I've had a lot going on. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit more about the Wee, Be Wee Green Beasties quilt. And if you have any um, questions about this, please put them in the, in the chat. I also, I want to point out, I realized that there is, so there's a fabric guide in the pattern for Wee Green Beasties. I also have the fabric kit that's available for the Wee Green Beasties, um, does the quilt. So um, the kit is sold separately from the pattern. Um, and uh, again, both of them are, are on the website, but the, and the pattern, the kit is accurate. It has everything, including the border and the binding, binding fabric. Let me set my, <clears throat> let me set the yellow fabric aside. I want to talk about this quilt for a second, um, but I realized in the pattern, so I have a fabric guide that shows you um, each fabric. So if you don't buy the kit, um, the, the guide in the pattern has each, p each, kit, each piece of fabric that I've used um, labeled and the amount that you need to purchase. So it's a really easy way for you to, to, to do this. The one thing that I forgot that I left out, I think I forgot to add this fabric here that is behind the chameleon. So I need to update the pattern. I'll be sending out an update with this fabric and exactly what it is and how much you need to purchase for this. Uh, and, and this is the only place that you see it on the quilt. So it's a really easy thing to you know, if you want to do something else, it's not that big of a deal, but anyway, um, and what kind of makes this quilt 
unique is that I use a variety of both Cafe and um, Anna Maria Horner fabric. And let's see, what else did I use? I think that's it. So I just pulled from a couple different collections and I just put this quilt together according to something that I thought was beautiful. Um, so I want to show you one of the areas. Ooh, you know what? I'm going to pull this little goldfish down too and show you um, one place that I like to use ink tints is on the little eyeball. I like to, oh, and by the way, I put this quilt through the wash and I dried it. Um, and I actually am using this quilt downstairs on my sofa. So when I snuggle up to watch the Super Bowl or true crime, I'm using this quilt. Um, so I'll do kind of a close up and show you a few, a few things about this quilt. Um, so anyway, I think this one might have, I might be able to show you this a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> so ink tents, this is where I've used ink tents. If you can see behind the, the fisheye, um, that area right there where it's kind of a yellow, let me point it out, where it's, I've got this yellow fabric and right there where I've kind of shaded it, added some orange to it um, to make the eyeball look a little bit rounded. That's where I've used ink tents. And I'll show you on the frog. Again, you can kind of see in that corner of his eye uh, where I've used ink tints, especially right there, just to kind of shade it and make his eye look a little bit more rounded. Um, while I've got this quilt up close to the screen, I just want to show you um, what happened when I put it through the wash. So there is a little teeny bit of fraying. Um, this, these pieces are fussy cut. And you can see just a little teeny um, softening of the edges. And I think that's acceptable to me. So if that's not acceptable to you, just be aware that if you wash your quilt, it's going to have a little bit of fraying. And you can see maybe just a little teeny bit on the edge there. But for the most part, I'm very, very satisfied and feel pretty confident that I can make quilts like this that are lap quilts that I want to use. Um, that's the thing. I love quilts. I want to be able to use, I want to be able to give my quilts and, and, um, feel confident that people can use them in everyday life and wash them. So, um, let me now, uh, access, look at the questions. Okay. And as you have any questions about what I'm working on, um, please just add them in the, in the comment section. Um, I do feel like I need to make a disclaimer <laughs> because you look, I'm giving you a window into kind of how I operate, how I work, what I'm working on. So this live in studio really does kind of give you a first hand look at, at what I'm working on. But a lot of times I'll say things and I don't necessarily always follow through. You might have noticed. Um, so I have to do a disclaimer because I'm always thinking and I don't always do what I say I'm going to do. So if I make you mad and I say something and you need to keep me accountable, just shoot me an email or you can always um, contact me and just say, hey, you said this and I, I need that. Okay. So let's just go down and take a look at questions and see if there are any questions that I need to answer for you. Um, it's great to have all of you from um, all over the world. I love that. Now we've got um, people tuning in from all the way from Sweden to South Africa to Virginia and Germany. Um, I love it. Pennsylvania, um, British Columbia, Wales, Texas. That is so fun. Okay. Um, Jane said she would love flowers or gardening things. Okay. I love that too. Um, <clears throat> okay. I am. <laughs> yeah. Laura, or, uh, Laura said 
Caroline kind of is my mini, mini me. Um, she's such a, she's such a cutie. The thing about Caroline is she's as sweet and fun to be around as she is beautiful. And she is beautiful. Um, Candace said, maybe include a cat. Maybe so. Um, okay. Sherry said, I'd love for you to offer kits for the quilt along so that we can quilt instead of shopping to find everything. I bought your Wee Green Beasties kit and it's great. Okay, that's awesome. I really appreciate you letting me know and giving me feedback. Um, I think I will try to do that. I will um, I will try to gather the fabric. The The one thing, as you know, it's, um, it's easier for me to offer the fabric bundles for anything that's gonna be collaged. So anything that's a collage, you can use um, my fabric bundles and I'm pretty careful. That's pretty much all I use. I mean, I, I do pull in some other fabrics, but so for example, with this, most of this fabric is in my soon to be red, which is coming out. So I've been using some of that red in this, um, my red and, and pink kit, um, as well as my green. So, but as far as the, the background of the fabric yeah i will anytime i do a quilt like this i'm going to try and offer the kit um okay so let's see here fussy cutting bundles yes that's going to be great um so some so she just karen just asked any news on the ocean creatures quilt um no i don't have a deadline it's floating out there in the background i do want to <clears throat> to work on it. Um, obviously the fish, the octopus, um, and I need to get going on my uh, jellyfish. So they are out there still, but I, I slid the, I, I was going to do the um, sea creatures quilt in March, but I wanted to do another um, foundation panel quilt um, for a while. Cause I have done only parchment pressing patterns. And so that's why I slid the, the, um, the nursery rhyme quilt that will be the foundation panel into the March slot, just because personally me, I, I just, I love using a foundation panel once in a while. And that's, um, because it's, it's really super simple. I can just set it here and everything is ready to go and I can just have fun with that. And actually the little old lady in the shoe is something that had been knocking around in my brain for about a year. So I decided to just pull the trigger on that. So if I don't like the way that's turning out or if it, if it moves quickly, I'll go right back to the sea creatures and get that finished. So that's kind of, that's kind of what's in my, in my head. Um, the ladybug quilt is something that I, I just want to do something quickly so that I can bang that out for my grand, for my mother-in-law. Um, <clears throat> so that's the, that's the latest Karen. Um, let's just hope that I, I think I can get it. I think I can move forward onto, onto that in by March, but it won't be available for sale until later. Okay. Um, let's see. So Lynn just said, said, do we order the parrot pattern before the webinar? So yes, um, the the parrot pattern is available in my book and I recommend just buying the book if you don't have it already. So be prepared with that parrot pattern um, by the first weekend in March. Um, okay, let's see here. Oh, I know a bug quilt would be fun and I might, I'll probably end up incorporating some bugs into the flower pattern because bugs are part of the garden, right? <laughs> Especially ladybug. Oh, that's it. Let's put the ladybug into the garden party quilt. I think that would be really fun. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Um, Lynn just asked a really good question. She said, I signed up for the, for the March class. Are they in order by difficulty? Do the classes build on each other? Um, that's a great question. So <clears throat> they actually, I didn't intend for them to build on each other in quarter, in level of difficulty, but, um, I think the very first one that we did, the tea party 
or the teacup was the was a be very beginner pattern that was really a simple project. Um, the parrot is a little bit more intermediate and art in bloom is not it's not super difficult but it, I think it's definitely a step above the tea cup so keep that in mind um I'm gonna put this behind me just so you have something pretty to look at okay so um they are not designed to build on each other those webinars that I'm doing each each um month are designed to just focus on one single project. So, and only if you're working on the project, um, I don't, I want you to know that if you're, you know, if you were going to do the parrot anyway, then join me in the parrot webinar. Don't feel like you're going to buy the webinar and then, oh, by the way, I have to buy the parrot pattern. Um, I, because they are sold separate. I, I don't want you to feel like I'm, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, so Gail said, do you find that they are stiff or does washing soften the fusible? Gail, washing the quilt is going to soften it immensely. Um, so I think you probably saw how this drapes just like a regular quilt. And um, also given the fact that there's, you know, only a few, there's only a little portion of the quilt that's actually collaged. So the quilt has, it lays like a quilt. So it does soften a lot. Um, the key, of course, when you're washing a collage quilt or any quilt that has collage on it like this is keeping your stitching, your quilting dense. So when I say dense, I mean no more than a half inch. And probably if you intend to wash it, keep it even um, tighter than that. So a quarter inch between, <clears throat> between stitch lines. Okay. Mary Ann just said, when you use ink tents, do you add more than one color? Um, yeah, I do because I am kind of an artist and I like to play with color. I I've mentioned this before, but whenever I'm adding, uh, <clears throat> whenever I'm adding something that's going to be a shadow, um, I normally don't, I normally don't use black or gray as the shadow color. I will normally use, um, either the, uh, uh an opposite color. Um, <clears throat> so I'll mix like with the, with the love banner. I used bark, which is a dark brown that's in this set. And I think it's a dark indigo in here. So I kind of mixed those two colors. Um, and also whenever you're using, um, whenever you're using um, ink tints, I always recommend that you're, that you uh, use, do a sample first, you know, just have a little piece of fabric next to you and um, apply it color your, use your ink tints and then use the water because, or whatever your medium is, because it does intensify as soon as you turn it into ink. Um, but then when it dries again, I find that it, uh, so when it's wet, it's really intense. When it dries, it mellows out a little bit, kind of an interesting thing. Um, okay. So Barbara just asked for those who, those of us who don't like a bit of fraying, couldn't they go around the perimeter of each piece with fabric fusion type adhesive. So what I recommend, Barbara, um, if you are going to wash a quilt, yes, I do recommend using the fusible web as your adhesive, but then you can also go around the, the edges with a little bit of fray check. Fray check is the product that's sold in a little thing and you can, you could do that. I don't like fray check because it's like a permanent you know, it's like a permanent glue and um, it's a little stiff. And furthermore, I, I like the fraying tech, the, the texture that it provides. But absolutely, Fray Check is the product product that I would recommend. I think I have the Fray Check over there. Um, let's see here. What else? What other questions I can answer for you? Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, we've got a we've got a 
Um, I've got two workshops, two retreats that I'm really, really excited about. One's coming up in June and one's in October, and I will be announcing additional retreats for next year. So um, one of somebody that's coming just mentioned that they were excited. I'm so excited. We're getting stuff ready for that right now. Um, okie doke. <laughs> so Maxine just said, gosh, wouldn't it be nice if there was more than 24 hours in a day? Amen. Maxine, I want to tell you, I love your coll the collages of your dogs. They are just beautiful. She's been posting those in the Collage Quilter Facebook group, and she just really um, beautifies our feed by adding those. So thank you so much. Um, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate your kindness towards me. I know I am kind of scattered because I am an artist, um, but I, I appreciate your kindness towards me. Thank you. Um, oh, yes, Jane, a butterfly. Good call. <laughs> uh, ladybugs and dragonflies. Yes, yes, yes. I love these ideas. Okay. So, oh, Barbara, there was a comment that somebody just made about Freycheck and they said, make sure it's not from Dritz. It will yellow over time. So keep that in mind. You know, I'm going to go ahead and grab, I, I hate walking away from a live video, but in my studio, that's one thing that's kind of nice. I can show you a couple products. Hang on a second. <laughs> Let's see if I've got them back here. Okay, here's another, um, here are a couple more products. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, oh, that's not what I was going to use. Dang it. Um, here is another product. This is made by Aline's that you might want to try. So I have Freycheck from Dritz. But I also have this, so this might be a good one. This is Aline's brand, and it is permanent fabric adhesive, and you could just use, you know, again, a little dab of this. And I was going to say, Aline's has permanent fabric fusion. I guess that's the same. No, it's a different product, but I think you could use that as well. Um, and then I also grabbed this because we've talked a lot about in the past about how to keep your needle from getting gunked up with adhesive. And I think using a little dab of this sewer's aid on your thread and or your needle. Um, I often, whenever I'm doing hand embroidery stitching, will use a little bit of sewer's aid, either the wax kind or this kind on my thread to keep it going smoothly. Um, okay, yes, Barbara, I'm super excited about that June retreat. Okay. So Ray Johansson just asked a great question. <laughs> Will you be coming to Europe anytime soon? How about we put something together? Would that, I would, <laughs> I would love to do that. I would love to go to Europe and do a retreat in Europe. Ray, maybe we just need to put that together. Um, I think Okay, I have to tell you a little personal thing, and then I'm going to jump off unless you have more questions, because I hate just droning on and on. Um, you know, my 50th birthday is coming up in April, and we are going to have a big party on my birthday here. Um, but I was planning to take my family to Europe for my birthday. Um, I love Europe, but it's so expensive to take all three of my kids and my son-in-law and my husband. Um, and so I was like, you know what, maybe I'll just plan something with just my husband and I. And so I booked us uh, an African safari. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm not going on my birthday. I'm going in August, but we're going to, my husband and I are going to do an African safari to celebrate my birthday, but let's do Europe for a retreat. I think that would be great. Okay. So that's that for today. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Um, let's see. So if you have any more questions about the Wee Green Beasties quilt or any of the projects that you are working on, I am here for you. I am happy 
to, oh, Barbara, wouldn't that be fun? Take a group to the UK for a collage quilter retreat. I wish I could do that. I want to. I got to figure out how to do that. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, if you ever have questions about what you're working on, if it's one of my patterns or something that you want to create on your own, please contact me. The best place to, to ask questions about a quilt that is my pattern is in the Collage Quilter Academy Facebook group. You can post a picture in there um, and you'll get feedback from people who are also working on the same project. And I like to make sure that I'm always answering questions and checking out that group a lot. So um, that's a great place to, to find me and to get feedback and get support for any project that you're working on that is using one of my patterns. So for now, um, someone just asked one more question. I'm going to um, I'm going to answer that. She said, I would love to do a flower quilt. Do you ship your fabrics to Canada? Yes, I ship all around the world. Um, I'm learning my lessons though about shipping product internationally. I have just taken off UPS as an option on my website. Now I'm gonna be using um, DHL. So when you are ordering something and you are an international customer, either, um, I think DHL is probably the best option. And so I've added them on there. So that's my recommendation. Or to Canada, USPS is a good option as well. They take a little bit longer, but they're um, inexpensive and then it will get to you through Canada Post. So, okay, with that, um, yes, you got it right. Some safari animal quilts. <laughs> I'm really excited about that. So thank you again, everybody, for joining me. That's what's new in my studio. And I hope you'll be here again next Monday to see the progress on everything that I've been, that I've got on my palette, on my plate. <laughs> Have a lovely day, you guys. And I will see you in the, on Facebook and um, see you next week. Okay. Have a good